thank you for all for coming today. Uh, my name is Richard Norman. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the business model generation canvas and uh, give you a brief introduction. I just wanted to get a show of hands uh, uh, to find out how many people know about the canvas and have used it. Okay, so a couple. So hopefully it won't be too repetitive for you guys, but uh, um, provide some information about why it's good um, and also uh, what, what are the best opportunities to use it. So just starting off, the idea of looking at business model alternatives uh, really is not necessarily about being the most innovative and trying to uh, look at new and possible uh, uh, you know, different ways of, of uh, you know, gathering market uh, share or something like that. One of the nice and the most important parts of the business model canvas is it allows you to expand my perspective of what my current business is looking at and possibly looking at alternatives that might just shift my business model you know, a little bit, but might give me the advantage that I'm actually looking for. So, I mean, this whole idea of looking through new eyes, um, I found that through my use with the business model canvas, it's really opened the way that I actually look at businesses, the way that I can interpret what they're trying to do, what they are maybe uh, doing well, and what they're not doing necessarily so well. We've all been in this situation. We're hitting, you know, we go to a bar, we're with a group of people and we start to discuss ideas about what a new business idea could be. Um, and one thing that I found for myself was I was uh, with a couple of friends and we were talking about a possible new uh, web property and what that could look like. And it was interesting because as soon as we started talking about things, this business model canvas sort of like injected itself into the way that I was looking at the problem and saying, what is our real value? What are our customers doing? What are our key relationships that we actually need to establish? And it gives you an idea of how this be tool becomes just part of the DNA, the way that you're going to look at your own business and the way, hopefully, you can interpret what events are affecting what your business does and possibly ways to maximize um, the opportunity that it presents itself. Really simple uh, way of looking at the business planning process. You know, it's, it's absolutely simple. Okay, so we have an idea. We develop a business plan around that that projects out, you know, four years, five years, however many, and then we have some way of uh, executing it, right? And so that's a standard way of taking a look at business. So the way that the business model canvas uh, fits into this is the whole idea is that we want to take a whole a look at a number of different iterations of what our model could be before we get into the details of the plan itself. The plan will ha allow you to test the theories that you have within the business model and then hopefully lead to some action in how you're actually going to execute it. That's the idea. So in a perfect world this is how it actually you know fits together. In reality a lot of people already have a business plan in, pl in, in place. You have the idea. And so what you're going to be using a business model canvas is looking at iterations and possibly different perspectives for looking at your current business model. And are we doing the right things? And how would we test that in the future? So that's the idea. So uh, I don't know if you uh, have ever seen this, uh, this graphic. Uh, it's by Bruce Mao. And this is the idea about how design um, comes to fruition. And I, you know, I like to use this in terms of business as well because when you're looking at the business model canvas and you're looking at how your business is, it's not a linear process. It's a whole bunch of uncertainty and sort of squiggly lines and we're going forward and backwards and then we're going to somehow develop some product and get it to market. So what the business model canvas is really looking at is the alternatives and it's an iterative approach. It really is about communicating to you know, a number of different stakeholders what is actually going on. You can apply certain patterns, but the whole idea is to look at you know, how do I use tools to help better the, my understanding about what I'm trying to do through my business flow. Um, obviously, when you get into the planning process, that's when you're taking a look at your finances, your, your, uh, uh, your, your projections for what you're trying to do, and there's also a certain validation. The validation is really important in this process because if I have an alternative and I've gone through it, it might look great on the canvas, but when we actually look at the numbers, can we actually achieve what we're trying to do? And then obviously, there's the final implementation, which is looking at your tactics, how you're going to cost things, but also the metrics and how this metrics is going to feed back within this whole system. And are you going to have to go and relook at the different alternatives and maybe make some uh, different projections? And I'll come back to this um, closer to the end of the presentation, and I'll talk a little bit more about how the uh, sort of methods might be able to use to do that. So. <coughs> 
So Alexander Osterwalder has, has come up with this idea for a business model canvas. He did not do this in isolation. In fact, there's upwards of 500 co-creators, um, and it was a big community that came together and through a whole bunch of different uh, ways to, uh, to communicate, um, they've come up with this idea of a canvas. And the canvas is really a simplified version of about all the different forces, behaviors, and relationships that are that that, that would be uh, designed around a business and a business model. So I'm just going to step you through each one of the component part, parts so that you get an idea about what is actually uh, implicit within the model and then or in within the canvas and then we'll go from there. So the first thing that we are, are taking a look at obviously is the value proposition. So this is what we're actually trying to offer and this is the differentiation that we have between our business and something else most important part of that is the canvas allows you to do make multiple versions of your value proposition and test those out within a very easy way to communicate these to whoever the stakeholders or just to yourself to actually explore different alternatives. Second thing and probably more important is the customer segments. So how are we defining who this is going out to? Is it mass market? Are we looking at distinct and uh, um, uh, discrete um, uh, elements of the population, uh, we're looking at multi-platform, all these kinds of things. Uh, the next one, the relationship. So what is our relationship to the customer? And this, uh, the definition of this, it could be through technology, it could be how is the community actually organized, do we already have an existing relationship? Are our customers um, actually co-creators of what our actual product is trying to do? So those are all things to, uh, to make sure that you're aware of. Channels, fairly straightforward. Um, the interesting thing to, to look at the, the channels is sort of where along the business cycle you're actually focusing your attention. Is it about awareness? Is it about ex exploration? Are you looking at pre or post sales? Those are the kinds of things that you can also work with in the model. Uh, revenue streams, how are we generating money from this? And we'll go through that in quite a bit of detail. So obviously looking at usage, uh, there's asset, um, obviously if a product, you know, what's the asset uh, price? Um, taking a look at licensing, are we looking at lending, um, you know, renting, that kind of thing? Is there a subscription model? So all these are different forms of revenue streams that we can take a look at. On the other side, we have to take a look at what our partners, uh, depending on what our product is or what we're actually trying to deliver through our business, these partners may be important and they may not just be in terms of actually getting our, our product to market, but it could be how we're going to grow, how we're going to expand. Um, those are, those are going to be important. Uh, the key activities that our business is actually operating under, what do we do, um, is it a production, are we looking at problem solving, these are the key things that are core to our business and how we're actually going to present, um, um, present the, uh, the model itself. And then finally the resources, and the resources obviously we have physical um, constraints, but there's also other things that we have to be aware of, intellectual property is part of this, um, there's the human factor which is you know, our own staff, but possibly uh, through relationships that we have to business partners, whatever, that could be uh, part of our, our, our uh, resource base as well. And of course the finances, how are we actually going to fund this whole venture that we're looking at. And finally, we just want to take a look at our cost structures. Fairly straightforward, um, fixed costs, are there variable costs that we have to be aware of, and also taking a look at the scope and the scale. So all these things are, are, are part of what the business canvas allows you to do. And so you can see through this, these different relationships, it's fairly extensive to what you're actually going to do in a very quick and easy way. Um, it's not as extensive as a business plan where you're actually looking at projections and you're looking at, you know, four or five year windows of time, but this allows you to quickly iterate through a number of different versions of what our business could be.